Hello, neighbor. Well, 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 what do we have here? Brisket, 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 truck roasts, and two racks of dino beef ribs. Everything's been marinating overnight in Marination Nation. My name is Johan, and I will feed you. All right, I started this cook shortly after 8 a.m. and got done after 4 a.m. This video is about how a typical cook goes with some tips and tricks. Let's talk about how I start my fire. This tiny little stick and this small paper bag and this frailed up stick looking thing got it going. Those splits are stacked in a square Lincoln log style and in the middle are thin little pieces of wood to catch quickly. Ah, here's our secret weapon, the shop vac, set on reverse to blow air. Is it normal? Probably not. Does it work? Yes. Now that we have a good fire going, it'll give us a good coal bed for the whole cook. Let's load up some meat. First, we take it out of its slumber from overnight in the rub. Oh, look at that brisket. Look at that beef rib. The rub was very Montreal centric with the coriander seed. What a beauty. Here go the briskets and the chuck roasts. We put them on the racks and place our probes for the left side of the smoker. Then come more chuck roasts and the pork shoulders. We position the probes on the right side of the smoker. After a few hours, some chicken wings made their way close to the firebox so I had something to eat with my cold beer. These chuck roasts are closer to the firebox so I make sure to spray and keep that bark nice and safe. Same thing on those pork shoulders. And those chicken wings will crisp up real nice closer to the fireside, acting as a meat shield. All right, folks, so in the beginning, we built a fire in our firebox with the Lincoln log system. And then we even used our secret weapon, which is the shop vac on reverse. It doesn't take a lot to start the fire. I got it started with a small brown paper bag this big and nothing else but wood. You just need to have some confidence in your fire making skills. You don't need a tiger torch. Then we got all that meat loaded up on there. And what I've been doing for the last eight hours is probably the most important thing. I haven't been talking about it, but you need to be aware about it. It is temperature. We need to have a temp talk. So right now with these temps, we're cruising at 192 on the top left rack, 206 on the top right rack, 191 on the bottom left rack, and 193 on the bottom right rack. I'm pretty proud of that evenness. And you might think these temps are pretty low and they are. I take my time. I go really, really low and slow. And that's because I like to treat the meat with respect. It must be good. So put some time into it. It'll be worth it. I promise you. I like to stay around that 200 to 210 for the first eight, 10 hours before they're wrapped and after they're wrapped and they're protected, then you can kick up the temp all you want, but make sure you treat that meat with respect. You'll be happy, trust me. So we just talked about temperature, really big deal, right? But what about how you get that temperature? You can have a dirty fire or a clean fire. And I recommend a clean fire, you will thank me. You want that nice smooth crust on your meat. You want that bark and how you get that nice smooth bark and if you have the perfect smoke, you might not even have to wrap your meat. So the smoke you're looking for is kind of like this. It's a nice thin smoke, right? It can be a little tinge of blue, a little tinge of white, but it's not puffing and billowing out of your stack. Almost invisible. We're smoking meat with a little smoke. That is perfect. That's the smoke you want. Almost no smoke. Okay, so we talked about how important that smoke was. You gotta have that clean smoke. And I'm gonna show you how to get that clean smoke. It's a clean fire. All right, you see that? Right now I'm down to my coals pretty much. Not much flame going on, but here's a tip. You wanna prep a log in here to get it nice and warmed up so like that when you put it in, it catches fire right away. Is it gonna catch fire right away? There it goes, it's catching fire. It's already a lot cleaner. I don't know if you can see my eyes, I'm tearing up and I had so much smoke in my face. But now we're nice and healthy. So let me show you once again how you do a Lincoln log setup. One, two, three, four. And you just stack it like Jenga. It's pretty easy. Whew, it's a little hot down here. Okay, so you see how my door is cracked? I've got maybe that much room. If I add more wood, I can crack it open just a little bit more to let more oxygen in to fuel the fire that I want. Or if the fire is getting smaller, I can crack it just a little bit like that, just to manage how much oxygen my wood needs to burn. So remember, the amount of wood you put in dictates how much airflow you're gonna give to your fire. Oh, so good. Whoo. I wrap the briskets, pork shoulders, chuck roasts, all about the same when they hit 160 internal, adding a little bit of butter to that wrap. And then we wait for 205 internal. Here we are. It took a long time, but the meat will be very, very good. First ones to come off are the pork shoulders and chuck roasts closer to the fireside. Then come the big briskets 
and all of them will rest until the morning for at least six hours, coming down in temperature very, very slowly. It is very late, but very worth it. Just remember, you cannot cheat time, and good things come to those who wait. Hey, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. It would really help grow the channel and spread the love of barbecue to others. In my next video, we're going to take an in-depth look at pulled pork and how we get there from a pork shoulder. I'll see you then.